Welcome, everybody, to Tim's Final Confessions. I'm Tim Derling, and with me from Jeff Witcher's Final Destination, Jeff Witcher. How you doing, Jeff? Uh, hi, Tim. We are uh, going to go through a band that we're both big, big fans of. Jeff's been a fan longer than me. And we're going to go through our Yes CD collection. And this is actually going to be broken up into two parts because there are a lot of CDs to talk about. There'd be a lot of CDs if I was doing this just myself. But Jeff and I are going to go compare our versions of the CDs. So it, uh, it's going to be a couple of long episodes. But if you're a Yes fan, hope you'll be interested in this. And even if you're just interested in uh, different versions of CDs, this one should be a lot of fun. So, Jeff, I'm going to get you to start uh, with your uh, first selection here. Okay, well, this is uh, Yes's first album, and I have the remastered edition. I believe it was in the 1990s when Atlantic was remastering Led Zeppelin's catalog and ACDC and Foreigner. So um, this, unlike some of those CDs, actually has a customized label on it. And then this has got the, um, I believe it's the North American cover on it, but inside it's got the actual, the I believe the cover that was released in the UK. And then it's just got a little write up about uh, each of the songs and then just some credits uh, on the back there. Yeah, you and I have the same exact same version of this one. Yeah, there's two series of remasters we're going to be talking about here. One was, as you said, I think it was around 1994. Yeah, they did. Uh, they did Led Zeppelin and Foreigner and Genesis and all of their big rock acts, the complete uh, reissue series. Then there's another one that they did in 2003. So because I'm a relatively new Yes fan, that's mostly what I've got. But I do have some originals. But this is a European version of the first Yes. Uh, and other than... Uh, other than just saying where it's from, yeah, it's exactly the same. It does have that alternate. I, I was happy to pick up the 50th anniversary vinyl of uh, this uh, in 2019, and it's got this cover on it, at least on the very front. So the second album is um, Time and a Word, and let's see, let's see what you've got, Jeff. I think this was the 2000 uh, reissue of this album because it's got the newer cover, uh, this has got a hype sticker on it, um, and it just says this has got four additional bonus tracks, including UK singles and alternate versions. So I think we've got the same, uh, just looking at yeah. yours. Yeah, we, we definitely do. It's got Dear Father on it, which was a B-side. It's got original mixes of No Opportunity Necessary, No Experience Needed, Sweet Dreams. It's got the single version of The Prophet. And yep. uh, this is the Rhino reissue. And for some reason, they weren't using the Atlantic uh, they were using the label as as our CDs have on them, but it, it's got a copyright on it that says Electra, which makes no sense at all to me. Like it's Atlantic, so and right. like the first Yes album, the first two albums both have something in common. They both have alternate covers. So there's this one, and then of course there's this one, which is kind of pointless because Steve Howard just joined. But as any diehard Yes fan will know, he didn't play on this album. It was Peter Banks. So. Uh, this is, I think, the North American version and the most common one. What I think is funny about this one, they've got the most ridiculous photos of the band inside of here, making that like <laughs> just funny yeah. faces. I mean, you know, yeah. I, I don't know if they had a wind machine <laughs> blowing in their faces or, or what, but anyway, what yeah. Um, like, like somebody was blasting them with an air gun or something. <laughs> <laughs> so now, so the first two Yes albums um, were kind of... Um, I don't want to say psychedelic, but they weren't exactly prog. They really kicked it into high gear with the third album. Now that's uh, Steve Howe's on board, the Yes album. Not to be confused, it's not the first one, it's the third one. Jeff, let's see your copy of the Yes album. Well, the one I've got is the 90s remaster. And you almost, it, it, even though the CD, the Jewel, is this way, you kind of got to hold it this way to read the album titles and then this does have the classic atlantic label there and it's got just nothing on the inside except for what was in the gatefold originally uh and that's pretty much all you get in the booklet there so mine is the uh, 2003 uh version where it's got the clear jewel case it says yes remastered expanded um so this again says electra on it and rhino i don't know why um, 
back cover there. CD looks very similar based on the old records. And this is the back cover of the booklet, which looks kind of like the back cover of your CD. And um, I yeah, mine's, mine's got a little write up inside of it about the album. Um, this is, uh, I, this is start, we're starting to get into the really good ones here. I, I really, really like uh, this album. What makes this one unique is that it's fully, yes, in their classic period, but still not great on the cover art, well, that's about to change. Well, and I read that when they took that album photograph, they'd been in a pretty serious car accident like the day yeah. before. And so they really were still shook up when they took that album photograph. So that's kind of why, you know, they look a little, uh, I guess, shaken yeah, if they, or, you know. Yeah, and uh, I think that's Tony K. Um, it's somebody's foot's in a cast. Yeah, so um, I think that was from the accident. For, just kind makes for it's kind of like Van Halen Van, too. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. Yeah, Van Halen too. He does one of his splits. He landed wrong, and that's why that. Right. Is, but that's for another time. So next up, fourth album, Fragile. This is again the '90s uh, remaster that I have here. There's no bonus tracks. It's just the remastered version of the album. And then it's also on the classic uh, Atlantic label there. And then the booklet, it's got some good, cool Roger Dean artwork and some uh, photos of the band as well. And then there's a little write up on uh, each of the songs in the back here. But, you know, I feel like either of these other Roger Dean pictures here could have made a great album cover also. But as it yeah. was, as you know, they did. This was the gatefold of the original album, and I, I do it's so cool what they went with. So mine, this is this is a special one for me because this is my first Yes album. The kids got this for me for my birthday uh, as a joke, and I explained it on my uh, the very first episode I did about uh, Yes was because of uh, on YouTube there, these um, I think it's JoJo's Big Adventure or something. There's all these clips on YouTube of these really bad accident just about to happen or something bad is just about to happen. They use the intro to roundabout and then it freezes. So, you know, they would be laughing at those. And I said, you know, that's a song. And that led to me getting this for my birthday, which is the, this is the 2003 uh, remaster of Fragile. Yeah. Great, great, great artwork. Um, this has a slip case on it. Some of my, some of my 2003 masters do some don't, I don't know why there's any difference. Um, the bonus tracks on here, are America, which I don't think they knew what to do with that song because this isn't the last time it appears, and an early rough mix of Roundabout. One thing I wish they would have put out, just for the sake of completeness, is the radio edit of Roundabout. I don't think that's on any of the compilations that I have, where Not they chopped I've it seen. down to about three, four minutes, and that's the version that I first heard. Now, I mean, mm -hmm. I'd rather hear the full one, but I just like to have a good copy of the, the edit. But anyway, so there's a slipcase, and it's the really... Front cover's the same, back cover's different. I think it's more like the gatefold. And again, that's the CD. And underneath in the CD tray, photos of the group. Um, and um, it folds out much like the inner, the, the record does. And um, it's got a booklet too with it, with again, it's that cool Roger Dean artwork. This is the first time uh, they would use Roger Dean, and he's done not all, but most of the Yes uh, catalog to the point where, you know, other album covers he's designed for like Uriah Heep and, uh, oh, it's uh, going to go right out of my head, Budgie and other bands like that. It always looks like Yes to me mm -hmm. and um, very distinctive style. So next up, they, they were on a roll, like the, the third of probably their their best three regarded albums in their classic period, 1972's Close to the Edge. Let's see what you've got. So I've got two versions of this. I've got the original release. Um, this is the first CD release. It's got the white and the blue there. Yep. And then um, it's just got kind of the, you know, looks a lot like my Led Zeppelin. Uh, yep. original we've, got, we've got the same version, except mine's Canadian. Okay. By the Canadian version. Now, yeah, this is the first early one, and I probably inside the booklet is just that. And then there's the photos. Um, took me a while to figure this out, why there's five members of the band. They've got six people on here, but I think that's Eddie Offord, the producer, the engineer. 
Yeah. Um, Close to the Edge, of course, classic, classic album. And actually, as we're filming this, I just recently got uh, a remastered version. What What's the second one that you've got? This is the 1990s remastered version. It doesn't have any bonus tracks again. It's just got the remastered album and then the uh, actual CD. Looks like the old Atlantic label. They've got the same photographs here that were on the other CD. Um, this one has got the original gatefold as part of the booklet artwork. It's got song lyrics here and then just a little bit of credits uh, on the last page of the booklet. So mine is the 2003 reissue. Um, I bought it in Canada, but it's a U.S. one. Uh, sometimes they just import them and it's got a slip case on it. Now for bonus tracks on here, it's got, again, it's got America. Like I said, I don't think they knew what to do with it because it didn't appear in an album. That uh, Their cover of the Simon and Garfunkel song actually almost hit the top 40. I think it hit number 46 and it's appeared in several box sets and compilations. Um, it's got the single version. They, they cut up... Uh, close to the edge and tried to make a single out of it like they did with Roundabout. They weren't very successful at it. It's called Total Mass Retain. It's just that one part of it. And it didn't work. Um, there's also an alternate version of And You and I um, and a studio run through of a song called Siberia, which of course they would change to Siberia and Katru, Katru, however you say it. So the slipcase comes off and again, and like the inside of the record, actually very similar to what they did with Fragile. The uh, CD, again, like yours, the Red and Green Atlantic. Um, this is kind of cool. This must have been when it first came out. It's advertising a billboard, a billboard advertising the album coming out. Uh, this was another big album for them. And again, the same very, very cool artwork. It would have been cool if they had done a gatefold just with this. They could have used it for um, a record unto itself. And this booklet, it doesn't have the logo and the name on it. It's just got the black slowly turning into green and some photos and a pretty lengthy write-up about the album. Um, you know, it's only got three songs on it, but you're not lacking for anything. They're three long songs and three of their best. Um, yeah, no, I've always considered Close to the Edge to be my favorite progressive rock track of all time, just because of the scope of it. And it moves through so many different suites and so many different movements. There's tempo changes, and it's just such a journey over the course of that song. It's, it's really incredible. Now, one thing about Fragile and Close to the Edge that I've always wanted to get is, I believe it was Steve Wilson or somebody had done some remixes. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, I don't have any of those, but yeah, he's uh, put a lot of work into them. I mean, to get the set of them is pretty expensive, so. Uh, yeah, no, they're not cheap. Uh, I'm interested to hear how they sound, but. Yeah, that's, it, that's interesting, too, because, I mean, I think they were a lot of their albums were produced pretty well, but for their time, there's there's some improvements that they could have made. So, mm -hmm. smartly, uh, this is their their first peak as a commercially successful band. So they come out with their first double live album, Guest Songs. And I this I believe is the two thousand and. I assume that, that looks like that looks like mine. So I'm thinking it's what is the um, the serial number on it? Is it eight two six eight two? It is. Um, yep, eight two six eight two. Yeah, this is the this is the ninety four version. And and if if yours is a U.S. copy, then we have the identical copy of it. Okay. Yeah. So originally this would have come in one of the double CD cases, but even the CDs themselves have a little bit of that cool artwork on it. Um, yeah, it's, it comes with a booklet, photos of the group on stage, and all oh, the artwork inside of here is just so cool. You know, this, these little plateaus or whatever they are, almost kind of reminds me of the first Boston album a little bit. I don't know yeah. if there was any influence there. Here's another cool shot. I mean, you know, this... This, is this so photograph, cool. is this what they use on the cover of the Tales from Topographic Drama, the live? Uh, if not the same cover, then one very similar to it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, one of the many, that's one of the many live issues we'll talk about in part two 
of this. And this this features it's all songs from the previous three albums. There, there's I don't think no, there's nothing on here from from the first two albums. Uh, the only other thing it's got mixed in because Rick Wakeman was such a prolific solo artist. I mean, it's got uh, excerpts from the Six Wives of Henry VIII, which is one of his many uh, pieces. So he does that on here. Yeah, and that sort of caps off the first era of Yes. And now another album from 1973. One of the more interesting parts of their catalog. Let's uh, see what your version looks like, Jeff. Tales from the Topographic Oceans. Yep, this was the 2003 re yeah, thing was mine. Yep, with the slipcase. And this has got a couple of bonus tracks. It's got Dance of the Dawn, a studio run through, and then a studio run through of Giants Under the Sun. Yeah. Mine's a European issue. I'm sure yours is the US. Other than that, they're probably just the same. Uh, yeah. Coming to slip, slip case. Really cool artwork. Um, this album, oh, there's another billboard. That's kind of cool. Advertising the album inside here. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, it's got the artwork on both of the discs. And even without having the remastered tracks on here, this album is, uh, I don't know too many fans that will go to this album and say it's their favorite. It's basically like one continuous song. And um, in uh, Martin Popoff's book, Yes, Time and a Word, um, there's a pretty lengthy uh, interview with Rick Wakeman where he says they were really, what they were doing was trying to, record enough music to fill up a double album because they sort of had like an album and a half's worth of material and he wishes that they would have either just done a single album or just worked harder because he said I can when I listen to it I can tell where the padding is and it drives mm -hmm. me crazy and this is the, the first of many times that he would leave the band and and then eventually come back but uh, this, you know there's some cool stuff on here ritual is is the one that they seem to do in concert that that section of it. And um, this is as progressive as progressive rock, I think, gets. It's most self indulgent, and uh, but you got to have it. It's part of the collection. Yeah, it's very bloated. And I think this started some of the backlash against progressive rock because it was a case of just because you can doesn't mean you should fill up an yep. entire double album. They didn't have the strength of songs to be able to do it. For me, I enjoy quite a bit the revealing science of God. And there's a lot of different sections in there that I feel they could have developed into more concise songs that they'd actually spent time on it. But I feel they had already set their mind to the fact that they were going to record a double album and they just went, you know, full steam ahead. I think that there could have been some possible singles material of either that or possibly the remembering, but honestly, halfway through the remembering, I just kind of zone out. And the yeah. rest of the album to me is just self-indulgent, you know. There's cool parts, and, but to, for me to recall what parts they occur in and at what points during the song, yeah, you know, at 11.30 into the song is a really cool part, but so I don't put it on all that much. Now, I think that they, in some ways, corrected the ship very quickly because I really like the next album they did. 1974 uh, Relayer, the only one with keyboard player Patrick Moraz. That looks like an older copy than mine you've got there. Yeah, this is the uh, 1990 remaster version. It's still, some of these came with a little, uh, the newly digitally remastered hype sticker on them. And then yeah. I don't, I'm not sure why, but I really love the ice kind of. Theme oh yeah, they have there Roger Dean did with the cover artwork. Artwork, I think that is very cool. Uh, you got the serpent there uh, on the back of that cover, and then this has got a custom label, whereas many of the '90 remasters do not. Yeah, uh, and I, if I recall correctly, the actual the, the vinyl album has a custom label also. Yeah. So, yeah. if I can pry the booklet out of this jewel case here. Um, that might be my favorite album cover of theirs. I really like it. It's very evocative. It really doesn't look like, you can tell it's Roger Dean, but it's got a different look to it. The ice caves and the snake and the, the horses. And it, There's a lot in there the more you look at it. And it looks really cool on vinyl, it goes without saying. 
Yeah, and so this has the lyrics, which are also found in the, the vinyl album, and then um, a picture of the band. It's kind of a sepia-toned uh, photograph yeah. of the band as they were. So the version of that I have is the 2003 um, Rhino reissue, and it's got a slipcase, and um, yeah, just really, really cool. Um, and customized uh, disc itself. Underneath that on the tray, I would say it's a photo of the band from that same uh, session. And, um, oh, there's that, there's the same picture that was in, in yours. Um, and um, there's a write up of the album here. And unlike some of the, the lengthier songs, um, they, what they did with the Gates of Delirium and just uh, made soon into a single, um, I think that actually works. Like that actually stands alone as a song. Uh, the bonus tracks on here is the single edit of soon again, which makes me wonder why they didn't do that with Roundabout. Uh, single edit of Sound Chaser, which is such a bizarre song. I love it, but I don't know why they bothered doing a single to it. And uh, a studio run through the Gates of Delirium where John Anderson doesn't have all the lyrics yet. Sometimes he's just kind of scanning the melody. Some of the lyrics are there. Um, but yeah, I really, I really enjoy Relayer. It's, uh, to me, it's every bit as good as, you know, the trilogy, the, the Yes album, Fragile and Close to the Edge. Yeah. So next, um, so yes, at this point, I guess, kind of went on hiatus and all five members of the band did solo albums. Three years before Kiss, all, every member of Yes uh, did solo albums, other than Rick Wakeman are, are already being a recording artist. But uh, so Atlantic, wisely, to fill up the space, they put out a compilation album. Not sure if you've if you got that there yesterday's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah this is the 90s um yeah. and i don't know if this came out in the original yes catalog when they released it initially on cd or not this is the only version i've ever seen of it um mine's got that silver sticker you were talking about this is a european version yeah this was a sort of a useful compilation at the time it collected songs from the first two albums to sort of regenerate interest in those it also has america on it uh, the full version of it and then it's got dear father which is a b-side so at the time it was actually a pretty useful compilation the cd looks kind of cool oh yours is yeah. different that's yeah there really is cool. that's what i was just noticing as you were holding yeah it. other than that like everything else seems to be the same but that's cool that the the disc is different so again always cool artwork with roger dean and this has got some older photos in here and it's got all of the uh it's got all of the lyrics to the songs too. So probably what, 76 or something like that, they, um, they reconvened and did, uh, I think one of their best albums, Going for the One, 1977. What's, uh, what's your copy of that look like, Jeff? Yeah, so I've got two copies of this one also. And you know they made up with Rick Wakeman, brought him back into the fold. So thank you, Patrick, for your service to the band. But this is the original uh, CD release. Yeah, I think that, uh, well, not exactly the same. I'll, we'll look at yours. I think mine's different because I can tell right away, like printing is in black and not white. So yep, yeah, so yep. you've got an old Atlantic issue of it. What does that look like on the side? I, I have a theory of what This I has got like. the red, the white and the red. Uh -huh. Which that's interesting to me because uh, that's what Atlantic CDs look like towards the end of the 80s. Okay. So I don't think that 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 uh, the two albums they did in the late seventies got reissued on CD until the end of the eighties, unlike the earlier ones. Sure. Uh, yeah, this has got a lot more inside of it than mine. Yeah, this was originally this uh, on the vinyl. It was like a tri-fold uh, gatefold thing, and yeah. they've got the pictures that were in there. But these are on black and white, and then it's just got some lyrics here. Um, and then the, the credits. Yeah. Um, what, a, what a great album. Uh, so mine is actually an old uh, European version. That's just the one I got off used off Amazon. Hypnosis artwork this time around, not Roger Dean. And uh, this is what mine looks like on the side. It's a black print. Um, and on the back, it looks kind of like yours, except this writing is in black instead of white. 
And the CD looks much the same. This is what a typical Atlantic CD would look like. And uh, other than that, I guess mine does have a little bit of, of what yours has in it, the lyrics and uh, the photos. But, um, and I actually don't have the remastered version of this. I know there's a lot of extra material on it, but it does appear elsewhere too. So you got there. That's yeah, this is the 90s remaster. This is a BMG uh, version of that. And yeah. um, it's on the Atlantic CD label. Cool. And then photographs and everything is in color here as opposed to black and white, like the other CD that I showed. And it's got lyrics, even though uh, it's impossible to read, honestly, unless you had a magnifying glass, there's no way you're gonna be able to read the lyrics on this, but it's cool that they- I, I've noticed that the older I get, like especially cassettes, I'm like, how did I, how could I read this? Um, it isn't the size of the font I find, it's I have to hold a flashlight up to it, but that's, that's another story. So next up is an album that a lot of fans, it didn't, it didn't get a lot of good reviews. I happen to really like it, but maybe that's because I got into the band after the fact. They followed up going for the one quite quickly in 1978 with Tormato. So uh, what's, what, okay, that looks like a remaster. Yep, this is a 2003 remaster. An interesting thing about this album cover is that it was another Hypnosis album cover. And originally, yeah. this was just the guy in the suit here with the divining sticks. And Rick, yeah. Wakeman, the legend goes that Rick Wakeman saw it and was eating a tomato at a time and threw the tomato at the canvas and they kept it. They just took a photograph of the canvas with the tomato on it. And originally, this album was going to be called Yes Dash Tour. And so they just took it and made a pun on tour and called it Tormato. Yeah. But I think we've got the same. Yeah, I've got the same version here. This is a, a, the US. Uh, actually, this one says 2004, not 2003. They must have been uh, later getting to it. Pretty much all the same. The, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the map. To, now, yeah, the Yes Tour is. Um, what you see in the background here, um, it's actually like a geographical, um, a tour is, it's not a mountain, but it's an actual location somewhere in the UK. So yeah, it was a play on words, like you said. And even the back, the photo has got like tomato splotches and seeds. And uh, right. I've heard many different versions of the story of who actually threw it, whether it was someone on the road crew or, or what, but um well, Rick Wakeman takes credit for any, you know, inspired thing that ever happened during his time with Yes. So, yeah, I noticed it that. probably wasn't <laughs> him, but. <laughs> this has a lot of bonus tracks on it, this one. is actually why I've got uh, two copies of it. Abilene was a B-side. It's got uh, Money, Picasso, Summer Born. I think Summer Born ended up on one of John Anderson's solo albums. I'm not 100% sure about that. Okay. You can be saved. Hi, days, countryside. Everybody's song. Everybody's song is an early version of "Does It Really Happen?" So it's got um, almost as many songs. Actually, no, it's got more tracks than are on the actual album. I also have. I just happened to find it used a couple of years ago. Uh, this is the original CD issue, and it's probably much like your old "Going for the One." It's got the red and white lettering on the side and uh this is what it looks like on the back this is the cd itself looks a little bit different what's weird is the cd is canadian but the rest of the booklet is american i don't know if they just stuck a canadian cd in it it also doesn't look like the usual atlantic cds it doesn't have the red band around it um it actually has quite a bit of what was originally in it it's got uh, all the lyrics the yes tour map is in the background and um, so there's an X, there's a, okay, yeah. Yes Tour is situated two and a half miles from Oakhampton, Devon in England. On a clear day from the top, you can see faraway places with strange Saudi names. Um, I really like this album. Um, maybe it's not the best produced album of theirs, but I like Don't Kill the Whale. That was a single. I like Arriving UFO, Release, Release on the Silent Wings of Freedom. I think there's some good stuff on here. But this was the end of an era. It was a short-lived reunion with Rick Wakeman and, and that era of the band. And then they're moving on to what might be my favorite. I'm not sure. 1980, 
they put up drama. Yep. And then more, you know, I'm so glad that they returned to Roger Dean doing the artwork on these albums yep. because as much as it may sound like a yes album, it doesn't look like a yes album unless you've got one of his classic paintings on here. Yep. And this is, uh, looks like we've got the same version here. The It's 2004 reissue. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's a U.S. one. So, yeah, we probably got the exact same one. Yeah, this is with Trevor Horn and Jeff Downs. Jeff Downs is in the band to this day, has come back. And uh, Jeff Downs and Steve Howe, of course, formed Asia. And it's like, follow all the backstories of all of the side projects would, uh, you know, we don't have enough time. <laughs> But uh, I really, 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 really like this album. I mean, I think it's their heaviest album. And I've often said this, like, I got into Yes um, kind of by accident, but I always knew they were a huge influence on Rush, who I've been a fan of for years. And I think if you're a Rush fan, this is actually a pretty good starting point because not all of Yes's albums are all that rocking, really. I mean, there's a lot going on. This is a pretty guitar-heavy, electric guitar-heavy album. I mean, Machine Messiah's got a really doomy riff. Um, long, long time ago, like in the late 80s, I saw the video for Tempest Fugit, and I've always loved that song. That's got a little bit of um, almost like a, a progressive reggae kind of feel to it, but I just love the song. It doesn't really happen as a cool song. And this, this uh, reissue has a lot of bonus tracks. Um, matter of fact, it's got 10 bonus tracks. Some of them are single versions of the songs. Some of them are actually early recordings that they tried to record an album with Rick Wakeman and John Anderson before they left with actually producer Roy Thomas Baker, who would work with them many, many, many years later. Uh, and it didn't go anywhere. There are just some early, early versions of some of those songs. But um, the art, yeah, the artwork's amazing. I also have an old Canadian version of that, similar to the old version of Close to the Edge. And some of my old Canadian CDs... Uh, on Warner labels have this right on the cover, this Warner special price with the, the W. That's what the back cover looks like. This is what the old Atlantic CD would have looked like with very little difference. It's um, black on white there. And uh, the CD looks as you might expect. And uh, the gate fold there. And then there's not, there's not much in here, but yeah, drama is a, I think as good a starting point as any for yes. And if to the casual fan, you know, it's a little bit like John Elephant replacing Steve Walsh. If you didn't know, you wouldn't know it was a different singer. He sounds enough like John Anderson that the material, it works. Yeah, no, and I would say this is more of a gateway to appreciating yes. If you're into heavier rock than say 90125, their next album was. Just because right out of the gate, you know, Machine Messiah is just the yeah. hardest thing that they've ever done. And they do it so well and so convincingly. And I think that, you know, John Anderson and Rick Wakeman didn't want to go that heavy. They wanted to stay more with their progressive sound. And um, Steve Howe and Chris Squire wanted to go in this direction. And the two camps just split. But I still think it's a, a great album. One of their more overlooked albums because people think, well, it doesn't have John Anderson on it. So how good can it be? Well, the answer yeah. is it's pretty damn good, actually. And you should yeah. check it out. It's, it, you know, like I said, you, you wouldn't necessarily have to be a big fan of the rest of their catalog. If you just like, you know, heavy rock with keyboards with some progressive leanings, like Rush would be the best gateway, I think. It's not all that. It doesn't sound like Rush per se, but it just it's it's that same it's riding along that same wavelength that, you know, if you were really into permanent waves and moving pictures, you could this is the same time period too. you could put that album on and go, oh, what's this? You know, so mm -hmm. um, in also in 1980, even though Rick Wakeman and John Anderson had left, um, you know, there must have been a contractual obligation to put out another live album. And they put out a second one called Yes shows yeah yeah yes shows the first one was yes songs they've got a lot of play on words here so yep. you have uh looks a little bit different than mine this i believe is the 90s reissue it doesn't have any bonus tracks or anything on it um i've What's got it look like on the side uh yep it looks just like yours okay so yours okay so yours came in a clear case Mm -hmm. And mine didn't. But yeah, we've got the same mix. I actually really like this live album. Um, it, it's heavy on uh, going for the one, 
little bit of uh, Tormato, a little bit of Topographic Oceans, and they even go way, way back and do Time in a Word, which I think you'll agree with me. That's probably the one song from the first two albums that gets the most airplay uh, in concert by them, even if they just do part of it. Yeah, so, I think it's the one that most people, if they heard or recognize anything from their first two albums, it would be that one. Yeah. This kind of reminds me of like, this is the Kiss Alive 2 to, you know, the original yeah. Yes songs, which cover just their first couple of the classic lineup albums. And then this one covers, you know, everything that went beyond that up to the present day at that time. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing on here from uh, from drama because it's they're all recorded earlier than that but um yeah they do gates of delirium on here too yeah so so patrick moraz is on some of the tracks uh but most of them are recorded in uh, 77 and 78 with rick wakeman um not a lot of credits inside here but uh really good i think that the cds look different though your cd looks silver to me mine's white in the background which yeah is, no mine, again, mine is silver yep this is a European version, but it's the same series. It's the same remastered series. So it's just interesting that those uh, kind of those decisions were made. It's the same artwork. It's just a different yeah. background. That's one of the fun things about doing these CD comparison episodes. So then, so yes, we're on hiatus for a couple of years. Uh, like I said, Howe and Downs formed Asia and were very, very successful. John Anderson resumed a solo career. And um, so in 1981, Really, other than yesterday's, it, this was the first best of yes to come out. It was classic yes. And let's see what copy have you got. Yeah, you've, we have the same copy. It's the 94 reissue. This is actually a Canadian one. That's This is one of the ones that you see in stores more often than not because, uh, because it does have, you know, for the casual fan, it does have the songs they're likely to recognize, even though some of them are live versions. Yeah, the CD looks the same. Uh, this uh, on vinyl is pretty cool, and I actually managed to find the vinyl with the original single with it. So it had seven tracks, but then it had a, a, a single that came with it that had live versions of Roundabout and uh, Seen All Good People. And usually when that happens, the single, you can't find it. Uh, similar, like, like I've never been able to locate 38 Specials flashback on vinyl, their best of, but I'm guessing if I do, it won't have the live uh, single that came with it same thing with cheap trick found all the parts i don't have the single that originally came with that i just have the four song ep this one folds out it's really really cool roger dean artwork unmistakable and uh still i think a pretty good starter you can usually find this in you know in most record stores quite cheap so if you really if you wanted to dig deeper into yes uh, i would say that would be a good place to start you know it's other than uh, other than uh, wondrous stories, it's all songs from the classic three albums too. Even the live versions, there's not there's nothing from Relayer and there's nothing from uh, Tormato and certainly nothing from Topographic Oceans. This was the first yes that I ever owned on CD, and if you're even just um, somewhat familiar with yes, you'll recognize just about every single track on here. There's not a weak track at all. They take the best from their classic period, the yes album, fragile and, um, close to the edge and all the best stuff. Most of the best stuff anyway, is on here. I almost could have made this a double, um, best of with all the material that still you could argue could have been on there. But that's also the fact that they did put it onto one disc makes it more affordable for the casual mm -hmm. fan. Uh, speaking of casual fans, so the strange one of the strangest comebacks in uh, in music history happened in in, in uh, late 1983, and this, of course, being the age I am, this was when I first heard of the band. A little song called "Owner of a Lonely Heart" was everywhere. It was all over the video; it was popular, but the song was all over the airwaves. It was a number one song. Uh, I think it's uh, either the week before or the week after that and Van Halen Jump were neck and neck for the number one song. So um, this was Yes reinvented with Trevor Rabin on guitar, uh, reunited with um, uh, Tony Kay on keyboards, even though it was originally Eddie Jobson. Jobson. Um, and uh, the version I have here is a Canadian version, but I think it's a later issue. Um, 
than the way it looks, although it does look the same as yours. And yeah, the placement uh, of the barcode is a little different, but yeah. And speaking of the barcode, I direct everybody to look at the barcode. 90125 simply refers to the catalog number. And uh, because it got pushed back a couple of times, I think it was supposed to be 90124. There was a couple others, but uh, 90125 kind of has a ring to it. It mm -hmm. has a compute, early computer graphic, uh, very, very basic, but very recognizable on a shelf for the cover. And um, I, don't, I really like this album. I like this period of Yes, the more commercial period. And they really uh, made a comeback in a way that not too many bands had, except maybe ZZ Top at this around the same time might have reinvented themselves. Trevor Rabin, of course, much different guitarist than Steve Howe, came from a much more commercial minded uh, background. But there's still some prog elements to what they're doing. Now, what I like, the CD is pretty cool because it's got the blue line around it instead of red because it's on Atco, not Atlantic, which is the same company, just a slightly different numbering system. And of course, another one of the odd things about this is that the producer is Trevor Horn, who was the singer on drama. So it's one of the only cases I can think of where a former member of the band ended up producing the band that he is no longer in. Uh, but producer is what he's best known for anyway, even though he's a good bass player and a decent enough singer. And this has, I mean, imagine ours look the same. It's got all the lyrics and, and, and credits in here. Uh, this album had a lot of songs that, of course, All Over Lonely Heart was the most successful, but Leave It and It Can Happen were also singles. Uh, two other great songs on here they would do in concert all the time, Hold On and Changes. And um, this, to me, you don't necessarily, this is a Yes album for people that don't like progressive rock necessarily. If you just like good 80s keyboard rock, pick this album up. You don't necessarily have to be way into their entire past to do it. But at the same time, uh, I'm sure there were some fans that didn't like this direction, but the fact of the matter is, is that it brought them back to life because for the, the, the MTV generation, now all of a sudden people knew who Yes was, and I don't think they would have before. Right, and a couple of things that are interesting about this particular CD is that, you know, originally, um, Trevor Rabin had written Owner of a Lonely Heart. I think he had also written It Can Happen and maybe Leave It. And he went to Trevor Horn or someone from the band and said, okay, you can have one of these out, one of these songs for this album that you're producing. And originally the, what was the West Coast? Yes. Um, yeah. They were going to be called Cinema. Yeah, they were going to be called Cinema, which is actually a track on this album. Yeah. And it's going to be a side project. And Trevor Rabin said, well, you can have one song. And then uh, it, it might have been Trevor Horn. He said, well, thank you very much. We'll take them all. And um, they actually <laughs> renamed it Yes. He, uh, you know, Trevor Rabin ended up playing on this album. And, of course, it became a big hit. It revitalized Yes's career. And, you know, the rest is history. And one of the things that I remember is Leave It, they had like five different versions of that video on MTV yep. promotion at the time. And it was, you know, pick your favorite out of the Leave It videos. You can find it on YouTube today, the different versions of it, but it's still a very innovative video to watch because- Yeah, I, I don't know how to, it's like they go, I don't know how to describe it, but yeah. Um, the other thing is that, yeah, they were going to be called Cinema. And so it was, you know, Trevor Rabin instead of Steve Howe. It was John Anderson, Tony Kay, Chris Squire, Alan White. And I think it was Atlantic Records that said, look, you've just reformed Yes. And there's more marketability in the Yes name. So we'll put this album up, but you're going to call it Yes. And mm -hmm. I think they were right to do that because it, it did. It gave them that shot in the arm. So yeah, from a marketing standpoint, absolutely. So yeah, very successful, very successful tour. And then, so the follow-up was kind of weird because it was kind of a combination of a live album and um, solo, not solo material, but material that showcased each individual member all recorded on that tour. And they called the album, it's kind of a confusing title, 9012 Live, The Solos. It's not the easiest thing to find on CD. Do you have that, Jeff? No. No, I, it's a little too hard for me to find even, yeah. It's, it's easy enough to find on record and CD. I actually was lucky enough to find a version of it. Uh, this is a reissue that a company called Friday Music did. 
originally it came out in 1985. This came out in 2011. So as you can see, very similar artwork to 90125. So I think a lot of people get them mixed up. And um, one of the things I like about this is that they kept the original catalog number, 90474. Not that that means much. But so this has, um, it had seven tracks on it originally. So it had a Tony K keyboard solo called C, or Yes in Spanish. Uh, Solly's Beard, which is a Trevor Raven guitar solo. It's got John Anderson doing Soon, which is cool because it reaches back. Um, they do Hold On and Changes. Those are pretty straightforward versions of that. Chris Squire does Amazing Grace, which he does that a lot on bass. And then uh, there's a solo with Chris Squire and Alan White called Whitefish. Uh, Chris Squire's nickname, of course, was The Fish. So Alan White, Whitefish, which is interesting because it actually incorporates parts of Tempest Fugit. And this reissued version uh, has two bonus tracks, City of Love and It Can Happen. So it's a, it, it's a cool um, document of the 90125 era live. Um, but like I said, it, doesn't, it didn't get the reissue treatment that uh, the rest of the albums did. So it's kind of one of those other uh, albums that's out there. So the follow-up proper came out in 1987, Big Generator. Let's see your copy of that, yeah. We might have a, a similar copy. Mine's a European version on Atco. Yeah, I think it's the same. Uh, this was um, another platinum album for them. It had two singles on it. They've got some play, Love Will Find A Way and Rhythm of Love. Very similar album to 90125, although there are parts of it, I think, that are more a little more prog, like I'm Running, uh, Holy <laughs> Lamb, um, Almost Like Love has got some pretty cool parts in it. I don't like the font that they used here. It's this old computer printout font. It's very hard to read. It isn't that it's small. It's just very hard to read. Um, I don't know if it's dot matrix printing or what they'd call it. But um, anyway, that was the second of the two albums from what would come, like you mentioned earlier, what would come to be known as Yes West or the, uh, the American sounding Yes. So the next thing I have is it's not yes in name but it's yes as far as i'm concerned in 1989 um you had a reunion of four previous members of yes john anderson bill bruford uh rick wakeman and steve howe they got together and did this album anderson i always get the order mixed up anderson bruford wakeman howe a b w h now um the reason I can include this here is because I have uh, Joel Whitburn Billboard books, top 40 albums, top 40 singles. This album hit the top 40 and it's in with Yes, because every member on it credited as a member of Yes. So it's a Yes album. And as you can see, Roger Dean artwork. This album came out in 1989 on Arista Records. And uh, there's some interesting stuff on here. Of course, you know, the bass, there's no bass player in that lineup. They've got Tony Levin playing bass from King Crimson from a thousand other sessions. He plays the, the Chapman stick. He's an amazing player. It's got some interesting stuff on it, but it sounds like, yes, it sounds exactly like what a late period, late eighties. Yes. Album would sound like with these four guys. Now the copy of this that I have is actually a reissue and it's only got a single card with it. Um, brother of mine was the single from it. I think they got the most airplay. They went on tour and there's several uh, versions of uh, video and audio of the live tour that they did for this album, where of course they did a lot of the Yes classics. So now it becomes even more interesting because Arista Records, some, some combination of record label and management proposed the idea of the two Yeses coming together and a little bit of a mess. So. 1991, early 1991, Union comes out. Now, we probably got the same version. I don't think this was ever reissued. It's almost another like album. If the, on. if the record company had made the non-makeup Kiss lineup and the you know makeup Kiss lineup do an a album. little bit, I never thought of that. Yeah. But yeah, it'd be like if you had Paul, Gene, Ace, and Peter do an album with Vinnie Vincent and Bruce Kulick and Eric Singer, and yeah, there's um, cool Roger Dean artwork again. Uh, again, it's on Arista, and um, version I have is a, I think it's a Columbia House version, a U.S. Columbia House version. Yeah, the CD looks the same. But this was a mess of of, of producers and, and different producers and 
different songwriters. Um, and I, I don't know, I can't, I've never been able to really get into this album too much. Um, Lift Me Up was the most successful song. It was a single. It's probably the best thing on here. I honestly can't recall any of the other songs just from, uh, from looking at it. It was kind of a mess. There's, there's so many producers and co-producers on here. The big thing, though, the big story behind this was the fact that then all of those band members went on tour. So it says, featuring John Anderson, Bill Bruford, Steve Howe, Tony Kay, Trevor Rabin, Chris Squire, Alan, Wake, uh, Alan Wakeman, Rick Wakeman, and Alan White. So you had two drummers, uh, two keyboard players, two guitar players. You know, I, they might as well have had Trevor Horn here, too, and throwing every and Peter Banks and everybody else come in here. So, yeah, this was kind of, eh. But... You know, if they can't all be, they can't all be great. Yeah, well, and Rick Wakeman, who has a sense of humor, he said he refers to that album as Onion because yeah. he can cry every time he listens to it. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a funny guy. His his speech at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction was pretty funny, too. Um, and the last thing that uh, I want to talk about on this episode, because we've got a lot more yes to talk about. In 1990, no, there's two more things. In 1991, after the Union album came out, course atlantic had to do something so they put this out this is yes years and this is a four cd box set i've actually got this on cassette and cd and the boxes look exactly the same uh this is a bmg version i got used and this has a ton of unreleased songs on, on it some of the songs ended up on uh reissues of the individual albums some never did, uh, and there's some stuff on here that was unreleased at the time, like Make It Easy, Run With The Fox. Uh, it's a good collection, and uh, the- It's got uh, the Yes logo from the latter, which is interesting. It does, yeah, this is the first time I think this, this sort of modern Yes logo was used. Tons of pictures inside here, a uh, big write-up, a big uh, family tree, which is interesting because you mentioned Kiss before. If anybody has Kiss Alive 3, there's a family tree in that, and it looks exactly the same. It's the same font. So it wouldn't surprise me if um, it was the same people that did this family tree. But, yeah, it's pretty in-depth. Each of the CDs has a slightly different um, cover on it. But uh, I've got them all ripped onto my computer. But, yeah, it's it's pretty good. And, the so of course, usually what record labels do, they put out a box set, but then they put out a cheaper version of it. And in 1993, this came out. This is called Highlights, uh, The Very Best of Yes. This is a Canadian version on Atlantic. Very 90s. I hate this artwork. It's hard to read. The song titles are hard to read. All of the grunge bands and alternative bands did that. It's like handwritten, but it's, it's light colored. Uh, the CD itself has that on it. Um, it's only got, you know, like one version of the band here. Probably the best known five-piece lineup. And it folds out. Like I said, just about impossible to read, but uh, still probably a pretty good single disc, uh, you know, to get everything, you know, because it's got survival, time, time and a word on here. It's got soon, uh, but then it's got owner of a lonely heart, leave it, rhythm of love. So, you know, classic yes is a good companion to this one. And that's where we're going to end this part one of my yes cd collections and and jeff's yes cd collection we're going to pick it up next week same time you know same place or whatever and we're going to go through what are not so many studio albums but a lot of compilations and a lot of live albums and be interesting to see what each of us have so jeff thanks again for sitting in and hope everybody thanks, enjoyed hope everybody enjoyed this edition of tim's final confessions <laughs>